Just in case you've been under a rock, M. Night Shyamalan has a daughter who is getting ready to make her directorial debut, and I am here to talk about that film. So folks, without further ado, let's jump into the review of the new film, The Watchers. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. And today we're going to be reviewing the new film, The Watchers, coming to theaters June 7th. So I've been very excited to check this film out because it was um, another film that um, gave us fans at CinemaCon 2024 some early footage. And beyond the footage, that was actually really good. Um, the presentation as well. They did some things on stage that was uh, super creepy and definitely had me hooked. Um, but as I mentioned, the iconic filmmaker M. Night Shyamalan, daughter Ashana Night Shyamalan, uh, makes a directorial debut. And I'm just going to call it for what it's worth. If you're carrying that Shyamalan last name, you know, I think there's always going to be a measure of intrigue. Uh, but nonetheless, I think she's here to um, not only, you know, uh, make a, a, a statement in terms of the filmmaking world, but I also think she's looking to carve her own path. Because the first thing's first, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks this, is that would she follow in her father's shoes in terms of sort of his tendencies in storytelling? The twist at the end. I'm telling you right now that this film does not have the twist at the end. It has more of the plot development. So, like, that third act definitely turns the page on what the first two act was kind of doing. But it definitely, for me, uh, has me a little bit more intrigued about if there is more storytelling in this world. I was telling a buddy that this film, and this may not be my best analogy, but... If you've seen the film um, Dracula Untold, and while you may have liked that film, you may not have liked that film, but the fact that you knew that they were getting ready to set up the Universal Monsters, so like you were like, okay, cool, I watched this, I vaguely remember what happened, but I'm very, very, you know, optimistic about what they can do beyond this. That's sort of how I felt with this film. Like, I felt like, okay, I watched it, it passed, it's probably going to be forgettable in about a week or so. But if they did want to tell more story within this world, I'm not mad because they absolutely laid out a very flesh foundation in terms of the story um, and, and, and specifically about the Watchers and what they are, where they come from, the legend behind them um, and then their motive. So, like, it does make a lot of sense in terms of, like, you know, what's going on in this film. But it, by all means, gives you it, it leaves you even more curious about like what possibly could be in the future in terms of this world. But you know, the first thing is like with the first two acts of the film is almost like a complete film until you realize there's so much more runtime left. I think I looked at my watch and I was like, wait a minute, there's still about 20 minutes left in this film. I thought they had told a complete story. And they did, but the third act, again, turns the page and the tone, and it does kind of focus on establishing possibilities of things they could be talking about in the future, but by all means, iron out the, the, the plot fully. And when I say the plot, like, I truly do mean, like, the complete art of the Watchers. Now, our cast who essentially is our survivors yet held captives because if you've seen the trailer you know what i'm talking about I, I think their story ends in the first two parts of the film but the third act definitely is really understanding the motive of the watchers which the watchers are some creatures of legend i don't want to give too much about it because i think as they describe what they were and i mean wh where they come from and what they are um i think like that was for me some of the most intriguing parts of the film i was kind of like ah okay okay I, I, I love the backstory to them I, I can get with that so on that note though like i know this is pretty much labeled as a horror film and i even i think i even seen it being labeled as fantasy but yeah by all means it's totally high fantasy horror combination um 
and and and, and the film takes place in a forest in Ireland that basically draws lost souls. Um, and with that, we have four folks that are um, in this uh, forest, which ultimately leads them into this establishment, um, what they call the coop, in which once the lights goes out outside, they have to stay inside and sort of just be present for the watchers who watches them. Um, and that's sort of just their thing. It's kind of weird as they say in the film, and it is kind of weird on surface here, but I think they kind of explain in a way that what you at once think is weird sort of makes sense again to the motive of what the watchers are. So um, Dakota Fanning, she is, uh, she plays the character Mina. Mina has had a tragic childhood. Um, she is definitely not the most, I don't know. She, she's a special type of person. So I say she has a distinct type of personality. Um, and she was tasked to deliver a parrot somewhere. And I, let me just make sure I just throw this in there right now. The parrot happens to be the comedic relief of the film. Actually has some of the funniest little moments in the film, believe it or not. Um, and actually the only funniest moments in the film, to be honest. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Mina is to take this parrot somewhere. Mina... Uh, for whatever reason, doesn't use a GPS, ends up in this forest and in the forest where she has to find shelter, where she ultimately becomes trapped. And that's her along with three other strangers who are being watched and stalked by mysterious creatures each night, which those mysterious creatures are the watchers. So Georgina Campbell's in this as well, too. Um, you know, recently coming off of um, the film Barbarian, uh, Oliver Finnegan and uh, all Owen uh, Foree, I believe is how you pronounce the last name, is our four. I mean, the four of them, they all got distinct personalities. You kind of really don't know how to really trust or connect with any of these characters because everyone's on the edge uh, because of just everything that's happening. And at the same time, too, you're really trying to understand the mystery of the Watchers. But beyond the mystery of the Watchers, I think that the, like the, the three different channels in terms of understanding the film is who the Watchers are, and how do these four survivors escape the forest? You know, those are like the two different things. But beyond who the watchers are, it is a measure of survival for the four of them. So it is that sort of cat and mouse game. What happens if the watchers actually desires to want them instead of just watching them? So you got those sort of different things kind of happening. Let's talk about the production here. I think out the out the gate, there's some really fantastic shots. Uh, the cinematography is really good in this film. I was really digging these um, surface level shots pointing up at the sky and sort of this fish eye uh, sort of lens styling that they had. I, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I, I think there was just a lot of good shots throughout the film. Some of the low light shots kept you, um, kept you uncomfortable because there were certainly things lurking in the back i thought the cgi was pretty good especially when we got our first reveal of the watchers i was kind of digging that as well too sound mixing was good because of the sound effects that the watchers were making i mean you felt it in your spine you know so they did a really good job with that um but for me and to be very very honest oh also just to talk a little bit about the design of the watchers i thought they were like really really cool like long and lean and some contortionist styling sort of things kind of happening like yeah and then there's some other things that happen i'm not going to talk about but like i was kind of digging the design of the watchers in their different stages of the watchers shall i say uh totally freaky i'll just i'll just put that um but listen, the, the, here's the thing I didn't like about the film. There was just a lot of things you just could not overlook that just didn't make sense. Again, Mina not having a GPS to get where, where she's going and then ultimately just getting lost and ending up in the forest. Kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> um, that's one example. There's a lot of other examples that was just kind of like, I don't know if I'm like, Nah, I, there's, there's just something that's just not clicking about some of the characters' motives in terms of, like, their means of survival and trusting one another. Like, there were some things that was just a little off there, but by all means, you just kind of was like, yeah. And then, I, again, I don't want to give anything away, but, like, 
understanding some of the characters and the arcs of some of these characters, some things just quite didn't make sense to me. And it just was just hard for me to kind of overlook. And, and in fact, I want to talk really quickly about uh, uh, Al Alwyn's character, who is basically a historian. I mean, she knows everything about the Watchers here. Uh, but she's like super protective. She's calling the shot. She's the rule maker, like all of that. And that dynamic inside of there definitely was challenging against Mina. So the Mina and her character dynamic definitely brought about some moments, but there was definitely some things that just did just just didn't make sense, you know. Um I also thought like Mina's backstory, which they have a scene about it, definitely helps to establish sort of the mindset of the character Mina. But I definitely think they should have had us pour a little bit more into the connection with this character and understanding the trauma she's been through as to what makes her who she is. And then in the third act that I said, like the first two acts definitely have continuity with one another. But the third act definitely is like the turn of the page. And it's almost as if like, if you know the better, the first two acts could be a complete film. And the third act could be an absolute start to a second film. Like, just just simply how it is laid out. Um, and with that being said, like, you can notice the difference in the continuity, but it didn't change the fact that there still was just issues with sort of just things that just did not make sense. <laughs> like, you, it was no way you didn't scratch your head in certain moments about certain characters' decisions and so on. And then as far as, like, the predictability, there may be some things you can definitely sort of guess not much, maybe. You definitely can enjoy and just let it kind of ride out. But there was definitely some things that was just right in front of you that you was like, I, I know I know where this is going. Um, but last couple of other things I will say, too, is that um, I think that, uh, again, I love how they explain the Watchers as far as them being from uh, ancient and, and legend and, and, and just sort of just establishing who they are, where they come from, and what their motives are. I thought they did a really good job in storytelling and that. That has me intrigued to want them to kind of expand on that a lot more. There is no plot twist, but there is definitely plot development. You know, it moves the plot forward. Um, and I think that, um, you know, with that being said, that the film overall for a, direct, uh, a directorial debut, I'm not mad at it at all. Again, I think the film becomes very unmemorable after about two weeks. But, you know, if you're here for, like, jump scares and so on, maybe a few. Atmospheric core, yeah, okay, maybe some. Dread, yeah, maybe some. Third act, it, it's a whole different story. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some moments. There's some moments that's going to kind of make you go like, oh, you know, maybe jump out of your seat. But um, overall, it, this, this, this film becomes more of a... Um, more of a thriller after a while, um, especially with the mystery of all the different parts I was saying. Because um, even to the point that they said, like, the being in the forest makes you hallucinate and then drives you mad. I thought they probably could have dove into that just a little more because I think that measure of, like, adding the, the that, that element to the viewers definitely keeps us a little bit more engaged instead of just kind of like what... Oh, I know what I was going to say, too. There's a mini time jump in the film and there's nothing that indicates that the time has jumped because, you know, grooming and so on. And there's no physical or visual changes of the character. So you kind of like, what was the point of even the stating that time has passed if you're not actually going to show it? You know, things like that that didn't make sense. I don't know. But with that being said, I think certainly if it does seem intriguing to you, I think you should check it out. Um, Ashana, I'm definitely in for uh, her next film. Um, and, and again, I, I don't think she's trying to follow in her father's footsteps. I think she's looking to, cur to carve her own path. And I think with this film and as far as the production, sound mixing, cinematography, um, acting, thought Dakota was, um, was, was good. I think she's such a baby face so that you you care about her just off that. I think they could have did a lot more to make us care about the character, but I think because of the casting choice, you kind of buy into that. And then there's some other personalities, uh, four distinct different personalities. And I thought the meshing of that with their performances really kept the viewers kind of guessing and, and so on. But ultimately, 
once you didn't care about that, when the watchers were the, the main focus, I think that the design of the watchers, the sound with the wa with the watchers, and then the story they told about the watchers um, certainly was um, intriguing. So to me, this is a very C film. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. Would I watch again? Maybe not. But, you know, if there's more to be told in this universe later, we'll see. Now, the big question is, who will have the bigger film of the of the Shyamalans? Will it be The Watchers? Will it be Trapped? We don't know. We're going to have to see. But until then, jump in the comments. Let me know your excitement. And if you have checked this out, your thoughts about The Watchers. And as always, stick around for more reviews here at Big O Bell Media very soon.